so it's 9.51 p.m. Uh, Monday, 9th November 2020. It's my eyes. I've been straining. <laughs> I've been straining like my eyes looking at the computer screen. So as I was just uh, looking at, uh, at this website, uh, looking at all these different rental properties, I just felt guilty. I, I felt guilty because I feel like um, this is. I feel like. I don't want to laugh at this. I, don't, I want to be serious because it's actually quite. I feel like I. What did I write? I wrote something. All right. Okay. Um, I feel like a fraud, a liar, looking at all these properties to rent. I feel like I should be earning money working. To earn this privilege to live in one of these properties on my own independently I feel like my independence should be earned not freely given by the state I feel so guilty ashamed for wanting to live in one of these properties on my own I feel like this is a privilege I have not earned so I, I wrote that as at 9 or 6 p.m. At 9.23 p.m. I, I wrote, I can't work, I cannot work, I don't need to be ashamed of that, I need a lot of help, lots and lots of help. And at 9.39 p.m. I wrote, they say this guilt is a part of my depression slash illness, question mark. So, um... Yeah, so that's what I've been feeling guilty about. I feel like... I don't know what to make of that guilt, actually. It's like... On the one hand, I feel like, uh, you know, housing is a human right. <laughs> I feel like everyone should have uh, a house. Like, every human being, should, no one should be homeless. But I'm not homeless. I mean, you know, I'm not homeless. So, but I do want to live on my own because I feel like that will uh, make me feel better. So I don't have to live in my room all the time, like you know, my room. Uh, you know, so I've. Uh, yeah, I feel like. You know, I said, well, I'm. I, I feel like a fraud. Why do I use that word? I feel like why am I not working? It's like shouldn't I be working? Shouldn't I be shouldn't I be doing what other people are doing? Like going to work, you know, have to go to work and and make money so they can live and do all of that and. I feel like I feel like I feel like I'm exploiting the system for my benefit. I feel like I'm exploiting the system of the social security of the disability uh, of the NDIA. I feel like I'm exploiting everyone. And everything for to live a comfortable life. I feel really ashamed of it. I feel really ashamed. Like I feel like I'm. Uh, that's why I use the word fraud. I feel like a fraud. Um, I feel like I feel like I'm not really ill and I'm just sort of making things up and I'm just like you know just like I'm you know I feel like like a fraud like a like a a charlatan 
um, uh, I feel really, really bad. I feel really bad. Um, You know, um, <laughs> I said, what should I do? Should I just sort of, uh, I don't know, just cut out all of my benefits and just sort of put myself out there into the world and sink or swim, that kind of a thing? I mean, should I do that? I mean... <laughs> Should I be, I don't know, dropped, like should I just f be dropped somewhere in the middle of some place and I have to make it out on my own, no support, nothing, you're just there and you know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta fend for yourself, that's what the life is, you have to fend for yourself else, else you die. That might seem a bit extreme, but... Um, Yeah, I feel I feel like a like a frog, like I, mean, I feel afraid to even say these things because what if the um the the government looks at my video and says, Oh look this person's a frog, look look they're lying. They lied about their illness. Look, look they're lying. We've got video evidence of them confessing their lie, that they're a fraud. And, and then they cancel all my benefits and say, see, we have proof. Yeah, so, I don't know. I just feel like a... I don't know, I just feel very guilty that, you know, I feel like I, I don't deserve <laughs> any of this support or whatever. I feel like I don't deserve any support from the government or... I have to, I feel like, I feel like I have to, f you know, earn my keep, like, you know. Nothing in the world is for free, and I feel like I have to earn my um, sustenance, you know. And and I feel very shitty about it. I feel, I feel very shitty that I'm not. p.m. 10th of November 2020. Got up very late. I went to sleep very late. I was very uh, hyperactive, I was searching, looking at all these rental properties, and I actually made a video last night, and uh, <laughs> I haven't uploaded it. And that video I was like talking about like how I feel. Uh, guilty uh, searching for these properties to rent and live on my own I feel like um, that is a privilege that I should earn and it should not be something I can just uh, enjoy um, you know without working and all of that um, so I was talking about how I feel very guilty and I, I know, you know I have this issue with um, scrupulosity scrupulosity it's like and it's also like the, an OCD thing um, I will link some videos like uh, 
I also have this thing called an imposter syndrome. I just learned about it like yesterday. I was seeing a video because when I was at university, I felt like a fraud. <laughs> I felt like I shouldn't be there. And apparently, this is like something people experience. It's called an imposter syndrome, um, where you feel like you don't deserve, uh, you're not entitled to anything because you feel like, I don't know, you don't, I don't know what, you're not good enough, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, and then also, like, I was like, uh, in the vlog I have recorded yourself, so I was questioning, like, my mental health, is it real, uh, uh, am I seriously suffering, and so that's this whole OCD self-doubt, like, feeling like uh, um, I don't deserve to be supported, and, um, so I was ruminating and it was like, it was really not good. Um, and I'm like, I'm paranoid, like, oh no, if I talk about this, then, uh, you know, the, uh, the government will watch my video <laughs> and they will think, oh, you're a fraud, you're not suffering from mental illness. Uh, uh, so there's my paranoia and... Uh, Yeah, so I was really ruminating on that. <sighs> anyway, so um, Okay, so it's uh, 5.57 p.m. on 10th November 2020. Okay. I, think that was, I think I did that in my sleep. I've got a pimple over here. So. Anyway, so so I'm um, the process of... I'm actually editing this video um, <coughs> using Sony Movie movie studio 17 17.0 platinum which I recently well purchased recently but I haven't really used it so this is an opportunity for me to use it so, so I just I saw the two uh, video segment segments I uh, imported into this uh, video editing session and which I assume is going to be part of this video <sighs> so why am I doing this why am I making these videos and why do I feel like I have to be so honest about all of my issues all of my anxieties and worries and concerns and well, why am I doing this I mean like isn't this like, isn't this public forum not a good place to put all of my thoughts out there like that and make myself vulnerable? Isn't like, wouldn't it be more prudent for me to just not talk about all of these things in public? Because, you know, people can see my videos and they can interpret it however they want to and, you know, an example <laughs> when I you know the legal profession admission board I mean they saw one of my videos and they wanted me to provide an explanation and you know, people don't understand the context and <sighs> now I feel anxious about that yeah <sighs> I am so anxious I get so anxious easily it's like Yes, that, that video, I, I made it private because, you know, the one with, regarding the legal profession and mission board, I made it private because I was worried that if the people whom I referenced in that video, I didn't mention any names, but if they happened to see that video, they might not like, <laughs> they might, more, you know, I feel like, I feel like they might come after me or something. So I was paranoid. Yeah, I don't mind. It's not like... I'm worried the legal profession admission board is going to watch it. You know, it's more like I don't want the people who I <laughs> talked about 
watching it and then them like, all right, we gotta, gonna get this person, you know. So I was paranoid about that. So I'm very like, I seriously have this problem. It's an OCD thing where I'll, I'll, I'll think about something, I'll worry about it, and then I'll keep on ruminating about it to the point where this doubt and self uh, scrutiny will be so intense that I feel like I have to make a video and talk about it. I feel like making a video is sort of like confessing all these anxieties and just putting it out there. I feel like uh, it's, a, it's a cathartic uh, expunging of all of my... It's like talking to someone, but it's also like uh, not being ashamed of... <laughs> who I am and how I feel and think. So about the mental illness issue, obviously I have mental health issues. I mean, it's taken me such a long time to even recognize what mental illness is, that it's actually a thing and that I have these problems. Like, it's only since in, like, in my mid, in my mid thirties, you know, that I really seriously started looking into it. In, in my past, in my 20s, I sort of tried visiting, I saw counselors and here and there, uh, took medication, but I really, really didn't understand it that well. <sighs> you know, a lot of people out there don't believe mental illness is a thing, they think it's just whatever, you know, they don't, so it's like when you're trying to tell people you've got mental health problems, it's like, I feel like, I feel like I'm on all three on shaky territory. I feel like, oh, how am I going to explain this to someone, you know, particularly if someone is very skeptical, how am I going to convince them? And I'm like, and when I, s <sighs> so I don't think I need to convince anyone who's watching my videos, <laughs> but I feel like I have to say something about it. Anyway, um, I have been, I'm not well, okay? I've got I mean, a lot of these symptoms, you know, this OCD ruminating thing, the self-doubt. I'll actually I've, I've linked some videos to self-doubt, and it can be a really, really, uh, insidious thing you know so doubting yourself to the point where you don't even know like like for me it's like questioning whether I even have mental health issues like you doubt it to the point where you know it's gonna be a really seriously problematic thing so um Anyway, yeah, I feel a bit uh, lost. Um, I am uh, in in one of my the first week segment. I said I said I felt like I'm exploiting this uh, social security support for <laughs> like, for my benefit, and I felt like very bad about it. Well. That's a very cynical way of looking at it, and that's the perspective of someone who doesn't believe mental illness is a thing. But I'm not. What if what I'm doing is actually seeking support, help for me to live my life? You know, for instance, I don't have any social contacts, I don't have any. Um, a job history, I don't have any connections to people, y you know, I'm very isolated. Now obviously when you're just simply looking at that, you might say, hey, that's not really a, there might be something going on here. Why is this person just avoiding everything about life and just staying in their room, afraid to go out? Obviously that itself is a uh, evidence for something going on, right? Um, so th that's the, you know, if you want like a concrete uh, evidence or like an external symptom for uh, what's going on in your head, that is one evidence. Um, and if you look at my history, you know, I, I've, been, I've been like on my own for years and years and I still, you know, even when I 
for instance, when I went to university, I didn't really make any friends. Uh, and, you know, but I had, had this, you know, situation, which I won't go talking about. So I, I, because of my isolation and the fact that I feel so disconnected from people, I tend to do things that are kind of inappropriate. And I'm not even aware that I'm doing them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm just only, I think I've only re uh, explaining the tip of my, uh, the, the iceberg, you know, I think there's a, a far more <laughs> complicated, if I, if I sit down and actually go and into all of my issues, it might be actually quite complicated because, you know, when you, you know, migrating at 16 years of age to, uh, to a different country, continent, which I'm very happy to have done. Uh, but, you know, it, it can have an effect on someone, you know. Um, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very fortunate. Um, but, you know, the way I my, my, you know, grew up in the family dynamics and stuff, all of that stuff, the stuff from your past, it, it makes you who you are and um, if you don't have the tools or the support systems growing up to make sense of what you're feeling and going through you can sort of absorb it and repress it you don't even know you don't even know you're doing that it just becomes just slowly uh, you know slowly you uh, yeah you you take in all of these experiences and you don't process them they get they get into your memories and into your psyche and they determine how you behave uh, you know you might have some traumatic experiences and, and uh, those uh, painful experiences which I've had lots of and you know people get painful experiences but if you don't process them you might start behaving in a way that allows you to avoid having those same experiences right you might get triggered over certain things and your behavior is going to reflect that so perhaps avoiding people and social situations is a maybe a coping strategy to deal with the trauma you know the unprocessed trauma and um, so so this stuff has been happening to me from you know from a very young age all the way up till even up till now I mean at least I've got some insight now but they just creep on you if you don't deal with them they will just get they just you just you just keep on getting more and more of stuff inside you and and they can really affect you you know, affect you badly. Like my paranoia, my, it's not my intense, this this rumination, this self scrutiny. Uh, ever since I got uh, accepted, uh, uh, you know, in, as a lawyer, I've been like, oh, you should only know, you know, I've got to be very, uh, like, I feel, I feel like ever since I, I, I that happened to me, I've been like, oh my god, I got to be so honest and like, got to scrutinize everything I'm doing. Um, you know, so I would sometimes make calls to Centlic and say, hey, is the situation okay? Uh, you know, <laughs> um, you know, so, so that, yeah, this intense self scrutiny is like a, you know, is a problem. So, I have a lot of mental health problems. A lot of them, you know, I mean, I get, they will get like right now because I'm you know, in, a, in a relatively okay place, like in my room and I don't have to worry about, you know, my finances and all that. I'm okay. But if I, if my situation changes, then I can become incredibly stressed and triggered and, and you know, it's just, you know, it can become very, very bad very quickly. Uh, so my my mental health is kind of fragile. You know, it's 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 easily like I'm walking on like a a very thin line. 
obviously I want to get better I mean you, you know I want to get better I want to get better and you know uh, I want to live a life that you know that I find you know meaningful and I, you know I was like related to that like I, so I've been thinking like where do I want to live and I feel like I want to live in like a, a, a place called Armadale and Armadale is like a, a, a town in regional Australia so it's like a country town it's like a one hour plane ride from here so it's like seven hours away from where I live uh, and I, I was thinking to myself, why am I, I was looking at all these rents and I was saying, why am I restricting myself to Sydney? Like, why don't I go somewhere else? So I was looking at all, all these country towns and, they, you know, the rents are a bit cheaper. And, you know, I can go away from the city life. The, the, like, Sydney is, it's like a, a lot of population, it's very dense. Whereas in these country towns, there's much more <laughs> space. Uh, so I think I'm seriously thinking of going to Armadale. Like I, I want to, I want to like see more places in Australia because Australia is a very beautiful place with all these parks and oceans and beaches, and like for I've been in this country for 25 years, and I've I've never I've only gone to like Canberra, the capital, two times, uh, for you know uh, a few years ago. Uh, you know, staying for a few days or for a week or something uh, each time. And so, but we didn't really do much uh, when we went there. Uh, I went with my friend. <laughs> and um, anyway, so uh, that, that was years ago. And uh, so I haven't really gone places to visit. You know, I spend most of my time in my room. Like, I don't go out. I don't, I don't even visit, like, all these wonderful places. I'm thinking... Yeah, I, I don't have to, it just occurred to me, why am I limiting myself? Why don't I go out and go to all these places and do all of these things? Obviously, I've got anxiety issues and all that. And, and the good thing about being part of the National Disability Insurance Scheme is that you can get people, like support people. So if I'm living on my own, and I hope to do that by sometime next year, then uh, someone, like I can hire someone from the NDIS to come and visit me <laughs> like so and 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 then go shopping with me or or, or 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 go places with me so i don't have to do everything on my own uh you know people they get that so that is a really good thing that happened to me is like the ndis i mean i didn't even know the ndis even existed it's just my uh, like all of the stuff that happened to me like it just it's not like i planned it it just sort of like sort of things that have one thing led to the next like when i went to my employment disability employment services provider told her, told her of all my issues and then she started the process of getting me into the ndis and then i had to do with deal with the uh, the, the appeals the, the 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 reviews on the tribunal i mean i'm glad i stuck it out because there was a point where i, I when i was in the tribunal where i just said no I, you know um, i was i just i was just going to give up on it but i'm glad like things worked out the way they did and i'm in a, i'm in a good place like to move and I'm very happy I got the disability support pension. You know, I had to fight for it. It's not like they gave it to me, you know. Um, now, I was <laughs> legitimately, you know, I saw my therapist and I've been taking medications on it. And <sighs> Someone reviewed my, uh, I had to go to an interview with, uh, some, with, with the company in order to get my disability claim processed. And in order to get my NDIS, uh, tribunal someone you know someone came to my house and interviewed me so it's not like I'm just saying I'm just saying I'm mentally ill. No, I've got evidence to support it and yes this year I haven't seen anybody but that's partly because of the coronavirus thing and also my anxiety just got really bad so and I think people understand that you know I've taught you know, I've, I've, I've shared my concerns with the NDIS and, um, um, yeah, I think I even called the, the, the Centrelink like last week or something and asked them, uh, you know, do I have to be in contact with my psychologist? And I told them I haven't seen my psychologist this year because of the, uh, I've been feeling very anxious and I think I may have, may have mentioned the coronavirus. And they said, no, uh, the, <laughs> the guy was confused when I called him because he was like, 
why did they send you a letter or did they ask for more information and i told them no 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 one uh, sent me any letter i'm just asking on my own account <laughs> so he was kind of confused because he's like why are you calling me because because they so i've done this like a few times where i've called them hey uh do you think i need to do you know uh keep in contact with my psychologist can i see someone else uh and actually um for my disability support pension they actually give like an extra like two hundred dollars every four months or something right so i asked him about that is that is that money like a uh, normal i mean <laughs> so he said yeah it's it's a it's a, it's a top up or something he said so you can see like i'm, I'm uh, i scrutinize all of these things and you know i'm always like so it's not stuff i'm just making up i actually think about all of this this is something that I, my mind goes through <sighs> being doubting itself feeling guilty and ashamed they do say it's a part of depression and anxiety and they, all of these things are kind of connected so i'm not making things up this is the things i actually do okay um i don't have to justify anyone on the internet but you know i feel like i've got to <laughs> i feel like i've got to really say it or something so anyway so armadale um it's it's like a it's, i don't know it's far from here it's like very far so um i think i'm seriously considering going there there's a there's a university there it's the university of new england so it's like a mini city but it's in the it's in the rural like not rural regional stereo australia it's like a it's, it's different from sydney which is full of which is a very really dense population and so because i have the the financial stuff like and, and also the support from the ndis i feel like i can go there and another good thing is i told my mom like today i wanted to go there and another good thing is like i don't have any social contacts in where i am i don't have any social contacts i mean other than my you know, mom and brother but their family sometimes you move away for family and i don't have a job here uh, you know my brother has a job and you know my mom uh, she has these social contacts to her friends and there's uh, you know so she's got and and, and and my niece so she's got social contacts here my brother's got an employment thing whereas me I'm like a free agent I don't I'm not I'm not uh, stuck to this place uh, I can uh, because of the you know the the disability allowance that's a federal thing i can go uh, some like to armadale or anywhere and I'm, my allowance would still be the same i, I think that yeah i don't think my allowance would be affected because i'm still in australia so it's only when you leave australia that you have to tell them i think but yeah but and the ndis is also a, a, a country why i mean it's a federal thing so even if i move from here to where the army they, they they have ndis people there as well so i can have that support there so i feel like i'm in a very good position and this isn't let me just tell you i did not plan this i did not if you asked me a month ago i i, I would never have told you that i will be moving out a month ago this idea of moving out into my own place wasn't in my head okay it wasn't something i was thinking about but right now for some reason like everything just sort of fit into place and i feel like yes this is i feel like i'm in a good place to move out and and because i don't have any social contacts or employment responsibilities or anything like i don't have any any reason to be staying here i can i can truly leave i can truly go anywhere uh, you know um, in australia <laughs> <laughs> if I'm gonna go somewhere else, I would need finances, like a job, and so that might be something in the future. We, you know, hopefully I can get better. Um, and the thing about the NDIS is like it, that support is there for you for life. Like it, it, the, you know, it's there. There's no time limit on it unless if you want to exit from the scheme, you can choose to exit. But there's no like, it, it's like a. For, for your lifetime so that's another benefit of being in the ndis um, so so yes i have mental health problems the you know i'm not exploiting the social security system I, I, I'm, I am someone who is who who needs it you know 
I, I've tried to live my life. I've tried to be, you know, and be whatever person is supposed to be. And it just, it just didn't work out that way. And this is how my life has ended up. Um, I didn't plan to, like, my life, when I was young, would, I mean, do any of us plan our lives to turn out any any particular way? Um, maybe some of us do, but anyway, so, yes, that's right, a government, if any of you people see, see this video, uh, understand that mental illness is a very complicated thing, and, uh, you know, you can't just listen to what I say in a video and make, like, all these judgments about my life uh, based on what I say in a video because yeah, again, another thing is like a lot of people do this armchair analysis of people from their videos. The videos don't tell you everything about me. They're only like the brief vlogs of my life. I mean, my life outside the videos are like, you know, no one sees it. I mean, uh, I spend most of the time just watching videos in, in here, but so you can't, it can give you some insight into my thinking, yes, yes, it gives some insight, but it's not the whole thing, you know, you, you, know, you, you know, you have to know me, know me more, and you have to know me in real life, you know, so I do have, I do, I did make an appointment with my psychologist, like, for some time, by a teleconference. I mean, I haven't seen her in a, in a year or so. It might be good to talk about things which I haven't, haven't, haven't uh, talked to her about it anyway. So, yes, I, I want to go to Armadale. It's a regional town and I feel like I'm in a very good place to do it. Um, and uh, the rent is cheaper than here. And uh, like for instance, if 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 I want if if so, a one, it's like an they have an airport, so that's good. I think they recently made one. So uh, for three hundred and fifty dollars or thereabouts, it's like you can get a return ticket from Sydney to Armadale and back. So that it's like a pl by plane, it's like an hour uh, by plane. So it's kind of it's like between halfway between Sydney and Brisbane. So it's a, so I was looking at all these properties and like yesterday I was like looking at all these places and you know it's like yeah you know <laughs> why am I uh, Sydney rents are very very expensive I mean if you want to live in a relatively nice place even if it's like a one bedroom one bathroom even if it's a, even that like, even if it's only that you still have to pay I think you have to pay at the very minimum. I guess two fifty, but reasonably you want to pay three hundred or three fifty per week. Uh, so three fifty or three hundred per week, you know. So it's like just for one person even. You know, it's, so that's something I forget. Yeah, I'm just tired.